Hello, today I will be talking about movie review number 992, and this one is one I've been most waiting to do. Another movie from my childhood, and also another movie from the Spider Mondays, and this is the third out of a Spider Mondays. This is Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3, the 2007 movie that stars Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker as Spider-Man, directed it by Sam Raimi, and is the final installment in the Sam Raimi Tobey Maguire trilogy. This is from Sony Pictures, Premier Pictures, and Marvel Studios that I saw on April 29th, 2024 at Regal Cinema 16 in Deerfield Town Center in Mason, Ohio. As the Chromia Pictures World was played twice, one for the 100 Years World War, and then the other one is the original variation that was used in the movie. That was used in the movie. Oh, I've been waiting a long time for this. As soon as I heard, that the eight live action Spider-Man movies were going to be played in videos for Chromia Pictures' 100th anniversary. This just was this was the movie I was most waiting for because I saw four out of the eight in videos, and this was the one I've been most waiting for. Some people might disagree with me on this, but I thought it was probably one of the best movies. In the Spider-Man movies ever. I know that, Spy that people would say that Spider-Man 2 or Spider-Man 1 with Tommy McGuire was probably one of the best Spider-Man movies that was made, and I do agree, but to me, Spider-Man 3 is my favorite out of the trilogy. So, this is this, tells, this takes place after the events of Spider-Man 2, where Peter Parker is now finally with Mary Jane Watson. Away, and Peter seems to be finally on the right track in their complicated relationship, as Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and Mary Jane Watson is about to perform on Broadway. Things seem to be going good, but trouble looms for the superhero in this world. Yes, big trouble. So, at the end of the second movie. We see Harry Osborn warning, warning that his friend Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and Harry still has vengeance, against, vengeance when he wants to kill Spider-Man because he believes that Spider-Man killed his father in Spider-Man 1. Even though that wasn't actually the case, he now knows who Spider-Man is, and now he is going after Peter. But also, Things seem to be a little bit more complicated when Peter Parker warns that the real killer of for Uncle Ben, as far as in Spider Man one, he believes who killed he who killed Uncle Ben, that wasn't seem to be the case. He finds out that the real killer that killed Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben Parker in Spider Man one, was Flint Mortal, who turns into the Sandman, and so. Spider-Man does fight Flint Mortal slash Sandman at one point in the film, this is, but this was before he found out that Sandman or Flint Mortal killed his uncle. And let's just say that he starts to have revenge inside his heart, just like it did in Spider-Man 1. This time, things take a little sinister turn when a mysterious black Grigu from space crashes into Earth and he gets onto Peter's motorcycle in, in, into his apartment and this mysterious Brad, Brad Grigu becomes a symbiote and it transforms Peter Parker's Spider-Man suit into a Brad suited Spider-Man. What first becomes good for Peter soon he becomes Sinister when the suit suddenly takes over Peter and his personality 
And let's just say that P.O. starts to do things that he normally wouldn't do, especially wanting to kill Sandman. And the revenge and vengeance that he has in his heart is definitely all, it definitely has some connection to the symbiote that is taking over his personality. But the symbiote isn't just going to be a Brad suit of Spider Man. Let's just say that if he gets it off, the symbiote will turn into something more venomous. Oh, so in this movie, we see Peter Parker going against Sandman, Venom, New Goblin, who is Harry Osborn, along with the enemy that he sees in himself when he has the black suit on. Oh, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say this. That this was probably of the, the probably the weakest out of the trilogy. I didn't realize that there were some problems during the production of the movie. Well, here's what happened. So, Sam Raimi had an idea how to do Spider-Man 3. And it involved Peter, MJ, Harry, and the Sandman. Even though Sam wanted to do wanted to have a different wanted to have a second fill in, I think he had the idea of Fortral. However, the producers of the movie and Sony kinda wanted him to do Venom because Venom's a more Venom is more popular with the fan base. Despite not wanting to use Venom at first, he decided to put in Venom in the movie because he eventually got the idea of Venom along with the screenwriters of how to use him in the movie. And I guess he did have a little bit of liking to the character throughout the movie. Um, but because of the production and the other stuff that happened, Sam, Sam Raimi would probably consider this the weakest out of the trilogy, but I thought it was awesome. To me, this was the ultimate Spider-Man movie that I enjoyed during my childhood. I probably saw this before Spider-Man 1. Always all of it, anyway. Yes. I know I should have saw Spider-Man 1 before Spider-Man 2 and 3, but... <laughs> I, I was young at the time. I didn't know much about the orders or as far as I guess I didn't really pay attention to the order of movies at first until when I got older. But it didn't really confuse me when I saw Spider Man two before Spider Man one or three before one. But anyway, Spider Man three is personally my one of my favorite Spider Man movies ever. And I also will say that I remember seeing the trailers and some of the TV spots, especially when I, f I think it might have been Monster House DVD when I first saw the teaser trailer. And there might have been some other moments when I saw some trailers or TV spots. I do remember the TV spot that was in Soul Sub DVD. But yeah, I definitely enjoyed this movie back then. I definitely enjoy it now. It would have been interesting to see what Sam would have done differently if he was able to complete his vision. Because I heard some of the weird scenes that could have been in the final cut of the movie. Definitely would have changed a little bit of the ending along with how some of the characters ended up. But I still thought it was a pretty good movie. And... I will say that when I first found about found out about this movie, well, when it got closer to release, I didn't realize at first that this was one of three movies that was released in May 2007 that was like the third in the franchise. It didn't exactly occur to me at, until until I saw a sign at Walmart. I didn't really see a sign at Walmart having the f having three movies from three different franchises that were the third in the franchise that came out in May 2007. 
I think that the order that the poster was in, but it had Spider-Man 3 as one of them, Shred the Food as another one, and Pirates of the Caribbean 3 at War's End as the other one. I remember that very clearly. I enjoyed it. That was awesome to see. So, it was very, very awesome when I got to see Shred the Food a couple, a couple of years ago. Again, in videos, but now I really was super happy to see Spider-Man 3 for the first time in videos. I definitely enjoyed it now. But, I was very, very, um... It was definitely interesting to find out how the movie kind of resorted in the way it did. With all the difficult production. Um, and everything else that went along, that, that happened during the production. But still, I really enjoyed it. Now, there was supposed to be a Spider-Man 4, and possibly 5 and 6. However, Sam Raimi didn't really have a really great idea to do Spider-Man 4. He would have used the Fortune at least, but he didn't really have the right idea. Or he had ideas, he just didn't know how to do it in a way that he would approve of. So that's why Sony decided to reboot the Spider-Man series with Andrew Garfield in 2012 for The Amazing Spider-Man 1, which I will be talking about later on. But, it would have been very interesting to see Spider-Man 4 with Tommy McGuire in it. So, even though we didn't get Spider-Man 4, I definitely write Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man along with Tom Holland, but you have to wonder what would have happened if Tommy McGuire and Sam Raimi would have done more Spider-Man movies. It would have been interesting. Especially since Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3 came out before Iron Man 1 and The Incredible Hulk came out in 2008 that started the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Very interesting. Now, I have heard that since Tommy McGuire did make a reappearance of Spider-Man in No Way Home, there have been rumors and speculation that there could be a Spider-Man 4 made from director Sam Raimi and Tommy McGuire as Spider-Man. While there has been no official confirmation at this time, let's just say that Sam is, really, is open to do it if they can find the right story and if it's at the right time. So let me put it this way. If you would have asked me 10 years ago if Spider-Man 4 would ever be made with Tommy McGuire and Sam Raimi, I probably would have said no. But since due to Into the Spider-Force and Across the Spider-Force and No Way Home, with the Multiverse, never say never. Who knows? I know they're looking at Spider-Man 4 with Tom Holland, but maybe there'll be a Spider-Man 4 with Tommy McGuire and Sam Raimi, or the Amazing Spider-Man 3 with Andrew Garfield. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But, in conclusion, Spider-Man 3 will probably always be one of my favorite Spider-Man movies I've ever seen. Definitely a childhood movie, and it was really neat to see it in the movie video. It was right, I was reliving the first time I ever saw it, even though it was on DVD at home. It still was right the first time I ever saw it. Because it was really a movie that really, really was very anticipated. When the when uh when it came out in two thousand seven, and it still is to me to this day. Like I said, it's pretty good. So that's my movie review, Spider Man Three: Please and Two Minutes movie review. All right, goodbye. Well, everybody, today is day three of the eight days for Spider Mondays. Where the, all the live action Spider Man movies will be, will be re released as part of Premier Pictures' 100th anniversary. And today is the movie that I've been waiting for the most Spider Man 3. As this movie and many other movies from 2007 sparked my interest for movies, as, for movies in general. But this was one of the major blockbuster movies that came out in twenty in two thousand and seven, and I'm definitely excited.
the red and the black spidey suit. Very cool. From Sony Pictures, Columbia Pictures, and Marvel Studios. And especially with Columbia Pictures' 100th anniversary. A 2007 movie called Spider-Man 3 came out. And for 12 years, it was the highest grossing Spider-Man movie of all time that grossed at the box office. Despite its missed reviews... I definitely enjoyed this movie, and I'm definitely excited to see this movie for the very first time in a movie video. The red and the black suit. Oh, cool.